Well, you know, I was a student athlete at the University of Missouri. I was fortunate enough to have that experience. And after I graduated, I went back to the University of Missouri and I wanted to get into uh, athletics. At first, I wanted to get into coaching. That was the, the track, so to speak, in terms of the, my first job that I had at the University of Missouri. But what happened for me was I had a mentor who happened to be a director of football operations at the time. And following him and learning from him in terms of how he operated and how he interacted with so many different constituents, Essentially, as director of football operations, you're the administrator for the football team, and you know he had interaction with you know campus entities, with uh, from the external end dealing with donors, uh, also other departments within the athletic department, marketing, compliance, development, whatever the case is. So that really intrigued me because as a student athlete, you know about what you're going to do, when to be there, where you're going, whatever the case is, but you really don't understand the how. So that how intrigued me, and and from following him right then and there, I know I want to get into athletic administration. Well, I see it as you know, I was so fortunate enough, again to be a student athlete and the experience I had was something that you know I wanted to share with people that fall in your footsteps, so to speak. You know, understanding that you know there might be some missteps along the way, but being an athletic director, you want to make sure that you can you know provide the the, the best experience possible. First class experience is what we talk about at, at Southeast Missouri State University. And for us, that first class experience, you know, incorporates three simple core values, you know, academic excellence. You know, you have opportunity to, to play sport at a high level. You know, use that as a vehicle to, to earn your degree and, and make sure that once you're done for eligibility, you're walking away with the institution with a degree because that's a big tool in your toolkit for life. Social development, you know, is another piece there where, you know, uh, young men and women come to a campus and we want to graduate them as men and women and understand the importance of giving back to the community. Community service is a big piece of that social development. And the, and the last part of that experience is competitive excellence. You know, you want to compete um, at, at a very high level and you want to compete to, to be you know, successful in, in whatever sport that you're playing at and also get that national recognition too if you're fortunate enough to you know, participate in the OVC tournament or the NCAA tournament, whatever the case is. So when you combine all three of those values, so that makes for a great experience. Well, it's very important. You know, from, from my viewpoint, I go back to talking about my experience as a student athlete. I didn't have, you know, too many mentors or, or people of color that I looked up to to model, you know, the appropriate behavior. Not to say that I didn't have that uh, elsewhere, but, you know, for me to be a, a director of athletics at a Division One institution, you know, I, I am a role model for a lot of people that are interested in getting a position. You know, I model that behavior in terms of, you know, how you act, you know, what you do, whatever the case might be. So it's important, it's very important to me to be able to model, to be able to model and also mentor, you know, young, young people that want to get into this business. And again, having the diversity component of it is very important to serve our student athletes. Learn as much as you can about athletics. I mean, people will always come up to you and say, hey, I want to be an athletic director, but what does that mean? What does that entail? You know, and working for a department of athletics anywhere, there's so many different components, you know, to the athletic department, whether it's, you know, your business office, whether it's compliance, marketing, I mean, you can go on and on. What I advise, you know, young people is see what their niche is, if they want to get into this, or if they don't have a niche, you know, be able to experience you know, as much as they can and learn much about athletic department because if you look at athletic directors across the country, across divisions, there's no cookie cutter approach in terms of becoming an athletic director. They all came up some way, shape or form through a particular discipline uh, in athletics. So what I tell people is, you know, when you're young and you have opportunity to, whether it's intern, volunteer, uh, move because you're not really connected with family or, or kids, whatever the case is, you know, take that opportunity. And then also what I tell people too is people are always concerned about working for, you know, the university that I'm at, Southeast Missouri State University, or previously when I was at the University of Missouri, hey, I want to work here. Well, with the NCAA, there's over a thousand institutions. And yeah, junior colleges, whatever the case is, I mean, it, you have to take that opportunity to kind of step back and realize, hey, what's important to you? Try to find that, that future uh, career path and be able to take those opportunities and, and run with them. So again, it's learn as much as you can about athletic department and see what your niche is. Well, I mean, a huge, huge impact. Because again, it goes back to the student athlete experience because, you know, some people might view me like that, but, you know, others will also understand my background and my role as a student athlete. So it's almost a, a been there, done that. 
you know, when you look at Mr. Allnut, whatever the case is, you know, we understand that, you know, he, he rode on the bus or, you know, he, he had practice and had to turn around and study for a midterm or, or whatever the case might be. So I, I want people to, to, to understand and view me as a person that, you know, again, I'm serving their best interests. The only reason why, I shouldn't say the only reason why I'm doing that, but one of the main reasons why I'm doing that because I had that experience as well. Well, I'm very fortunate to be on that committee. Uh, number one, not just for me uh, professionally, uh, also for that I'm serving, you know, for Southeast Missouri State University and also as OVC. So we have that recognition there uh, as well. But really with the uh, MOIC, I, I feel it's very important just to bring about um, awareness, you know, of, of diversity uh, issues that, that are out there for, from the NCAA standpoint. Uh, opportunities, again, as we talked about before, for young professionals in terms of career development, whether that is to make the next step, you know, someplace else, or just make them, make them better at the job that they're doing at their current institution. But again, it's, it's one of awareness and also understanding, too, that, you know, there, there's a lot of opportunities for minorities uh, to be involved in athletics, and also there's a lot of ways to be able to funnel, so to speak, uh, minority uh, student athletes into athletic administration. So being on that role and again, creating that awareness is, is very important to me. Again, I think you can put all athletic directors on the seat and the first thing they'll say is resources, even if you're at a Power Five um, institution or conference or whatever the case might be. So being able to, you know, find more resources to support the mission uh, that we're doing to ensure that we're providing that first class uh, experience for our student athletes. That's, that's, you know, that's number one, you know, priority that's out there. But also too, you know, we talk about this governor's structure and what exactly is that going to look like? You know, people really don't know what that's going to look like. But when you combine that with, with resources and how you're going to be able to, you know, make things work moving forward, you know, that's going to be a challenge to figure out whether it's cost of attendance, whether it's uh, being able to provide, you know, those additional benefits. Um, whatever the case might be, there's a whole litany uh, of stuff that's out there, laundry list, so to speak, of you know what we need to be aware of, and, and how are we going to prioritize that? You know, Title IX is also an issue that uh, you know we have to, to you know be able to recognize and, and be able to have plans in terms of you know how do we best move our university, put their best foot forward in terms of how we're going to you know tackle that and make sure we're complying as best we can. So. I know you said one issue or, or future issues, there's, there's a lot of issues that are out there, but you know, you go back to, to resources and plan for that, and then I think the, the thing that's out there in everyone's mind is the new governor structure and what exactly that's going to look like, and how are we going to not necessarily react, but be able to be proactive in terms of being able to tackle that moving forward.